What's going on, fellas? My name is Gray Madden, and in this video, I'm going to show you how I went about building this continuous flow through worm bin. This sucker is four feet long, two feet wide, so it's got a surface area of eight square feet and is capable of housing between eight and 16 pounds of worms and processing between four and eight pounds of compost a day. Uh, the upper portion here is where the worms actually are and the lower portion is where you harvest the worm compost. It's a relatively cheap and easy project. I've probably got around $50 invested in this but I'm using materials left over from other projects. If you run out and buy the material specifically for this you're going to be paying somewhere around under $120, give or take. Uh, it's pretty quick to slap together and you should be able to finish in a day. Uh, if you'd like to see written plans and instructions, you can bounce over to my website, madmanman.com. Uh, other than that, let's go ahead and get started. All right, let's talk about the tools that you're gonna need for this project. In this picture, I've got the tools that I use to make the worm bin. You can see I've got a miter saw, a circular saw, and a jigsaw, along with a drill and a driver, a couple straight edges, and a square. Now, the jigsaw and the miter saw aren't strictly necessary. It just made my life a little bit easier. But uh, if you don't have one, don't fret. You can do without. You're going to need something to cut the plywood up, something to cut the 2x4s, and something to cut the tubing material. Uh, I use a jigsaw for this, but if you don't have one, you could use a tubing cutter or a hacksaw. Whatever you got, go ahead and use it. All right, now let's line up the materials we're gonna need for the project. We're gonna need five 10 foot lengths of half inch electrical conduit, seven eight foot two by fours, two sheets of half inch exterior grade plywood, and we're gonna assemble it with some inch and five eighths decking screws, as well as some three inch decking screws and we're going to finish it up with a little bit of paint. All right, now that we have our materials and tools squared away, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that I'm going to do is get all the materials cut to size. I've got a written cut list along with the plans on my website madmanmadden.com, so make sure you go over there and check that out. Uh, when cutting the sheets of plywood, I'm using a circular saw here. I feel that's probably the best tool for the job. Uh, if you're going to be doing many projects, you're going to need a circular saw, so go ahead and invest in one. I'm using a miter saw to cut these 2x4 sawing to. However, if you don't have one, you can do just fine by using a circular saw. I'm being lazy, and I don't particularly care about the cut quality on this electrical conduit, so I'm cutting it with a jigsaw like this. However, if you don't have a jigsaw, you can always use a tubing cutter like you're supposed to or a hacksaw. Uh, either method will work perfectly fine. It will just go a little bit slower. All right, once we have everything cut to size, we're going to take two of our 47 inch 2x4s. We should have six of them. We're going to take two and drill 25 three quarter inch holes down the center line of its length. We're going to start two and three quarters inches in and drill a first hole. Then we're going to uh, drill another one every inch and three quarters on center down its length and you'll see what that's about later on all right now that we have the holes drilled we can start the assembly process the first step to assembling this thing is to put together three rectangular frames that are 47 inches long and 23 inches wide in this shot you see me assembling one rectangular frame that uses the two by fours we drilled the holes in we're going to make this frame and we're going to assemble two more just like it that don't have the holes drilled through the 2x4s. Our next step is going to be to take one of the frames that doesn't have the holes in it and attach the 47 by 23 inch piece of plywood to it. This is going to serve as a base to our worm bin. With the plywood base attached to the frame, we're going to flip the whole assembly over and attach the four 6 inch legs to each corner of the frame. Once these legs are screwed in, the base is completely assembled. In this shot, you see me attaching one of the sides to the base. Uh, the sides are 23 inches wide by 48 inches tall. 
At this time we're going to attach both sides and the back which is 48 by 48 inches to the base. You'll notice that most exterior grade plywood sold in home improvement stores is BC grade. B grade wood means that any knot holes are filled with a filler material and C grade means that knot holes are exposed. In most plywood there is a good side and a bad side. This is a picture of the B grade side and this is a picture of the C side. On this project and the other projects you work on you're going to want to make sure that you have the good side facing out. Alright once you have your sides and back attached to the base with the good sides facing out you're going to want to attach four of your 18 and a half inch 2x4 supports to each corner of the worm bin. With those supports secured to the sides you'll pick up the frame that has an electrical conduit through it and place those on top of the supports and fasten the, that to the sides and back as well. The next step is basically identical to the previous step. You take four of the 18 and a half inch 2x4 supports and place those on top of the middle frame and secure those to the sides. Then you take the top frame and place that on top of the supports and secure that to the sides and back as well. Once the top frame is in place, we can go ahead and attach the front piece of plywood. This plywood will also serve to keep the electrical conduit from sliding out. The bottom front portion is attached using hinges to enable us to open it up so we can harvest the worm casings from beneath. I don't have a shot of me installing the top, but it was also attached using hinges to allow me to easily open it to feed the worms. Now that the worm bin is assembled, the final step is to cover the entire exterior with a good coat of paint. So that's about it for this project. Stay tuned, I'm gonna be making a video about how to set this bad boy up and get it running. Uh, if you'd like to see written plans and instructions, you can bounce on over to my website, madmanmadden.com. Other than that, take it easy and we'll see you next time.